Hey guys, Norman Consumer here. It's been two weeks since I have recorded the video, so this feels great to be back. But that to the side, you may have heard that the new iPhone 14 Pro has a new 48 megapixel camera, right? The beautiful pictures that you can take with it, yes, even the amateurs can take with it, and that'd be amazing. But you also may have heard that the new phones use what's called pixel binning. To condense those 48 megapixels down to a 12 megapixel to save space. I mean, that's basically what it is. Uh, so what is pixel binning? How the hell does it work? Let's talk about it. But first, as usual, if you learn something new, if I can make you chuckle before the end of this video, if you like how I'm rocking, or if you just like my vibe, then go ahead, like, and subscribe. While you at it, hit that bell icon to turn those notifications away. Ding. You know when to upload something new. Here goes a warning. A, a, a precursor, a public service announcement. And I'm gonna yell for the people in the back. I am not an expert and I'm just sharing what I have learned from various sources. That way you don't have to read all of that yourself. But if you really want to, I will leave the links down in the description below. Now let's get back to it. And before jumping into what pixel binning is, we have to get to the fundamentals and learn what an actual pixel is. A pixel is also called a photo site. It's a physical part of a smartphone's camera sensor, which captures light. So far, so good, nice and simple. Now pixels gather light in order to produce images. Again, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Pixels need to be pretty large in order to gather more light. More light means better photos. Uh, so you definitely don't want to have small pixels or a small number of pixels. Uh, however, smartphone camera sensors can only be so big. This means that capturing more and more light is getting difficult. Now, unless you want to have smartphone camera bumps get even more ridiculously large, we can only have so many pixels, guys, so many megapixels. Uh, so in order to gather the light needed to produce nice, beautiful photos, manufacturers have come up with a great idea. Of course, it's pixel bidding. I'm sure you guys know that. All right, so we just went over that pixels gather light to produce images. But we don't want small pixels because they don't gather enough light. But having super large pixels requires super large camera sensors, and we don't need our camera sensors being any bigger at this point. Phone's going to be 85% camera bump if we keep going that way. So to find a sweet spot, manufacturers use pixel binning. Pixel binning combines data from four pixels into one. A good example from Android Authority is to think of a camera sensor as a yard, right? The pixels are buckets which collect rain. And you have two options to catch the rain. You can fill the yard with a bunch of small buckets. That's a lot of work. Or you can use big buckets four times the size of the little ones. That would be my option because fewer buckets would get the same result. Work smarter, not harder, guys. Now, thanks to using a quad bear filter, pixel binning is possible. Now, what is a quad bear filter, you ask, other than a dope rhyming name? Well, it's a color filter used in digital camera sensors. This filter, this filter captures the red, green, and blue colors of an image by sitting on top of the pixels. Now, normally, a bear filter captures 50% green, 25% red, and 25% blue thanks to its filters. The human eye picks up green light easier than red and blue, so the bear filter is set up this way to imitate the way our eyes pick up light. Now, once the light is captured, the bear filter groups the colors into clusters of four, hence the name Quiet Bear Layer. Now, the pixel binning effect comes into play after software takes over some conversion, which kind of brings everything together into a nice, harmonious package. Oh. Now, pixel binning is the best thing since sliced bread, right? Uh, if you've watched my channel long enough, you know, technology is never straightforward. I should go ahead and get that on a shirt somewhere. Uh, you see, you're basically dividing the native resolution, aka your megapixels, in four. For example, the new iPhone 14 Pro has a 48 megapixel camera. The phone also uses pixel binning. The shots produced end up being 12 megapixels by default to save space. You can take it in 48 megapixels. You have a little bit more detail, but also a lot more space taken up. Uh, so yeah, you have a 48 megapixel captured image, but in the end, you still have a 12 megapixel image after all the processing done is done unless you opt to keep the original 48 megapixels, which is better for editing. Uh, now, many companies other than Apple utilize pixel binning. You got Google, Samsung, Xiaomi, OnePlus, just to name a few, and others which utilize, which utilize this technique. And if you see a smartphone with a high megapixel count, you can almost bet the last dollar that phone utilizes pixel binning. So that's a rough overview of how pixel binning works. I got all my information from Android Authority, and there's a bit more on their website on this topic I didn't cover. Uh, so again, the link for that is down in the description below. 
Um, and guys, I truly hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new to add to your knowledge bank. And with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something new, if I made you chuckle before the end of this video arrived, before this point, or if you just like my vibe, then go ahead, like, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell icon too to turn those notifications. That way, ding, you know when I upload something new. And please let me know what you guys think of this video down in the comments below. That way I can make better videos for y'all. As usual, this has been Norman Consumer, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.